What is up, everybody? It is Pirate Wick here. Uh, I got my eye patch on. As many of you know, I had a detached retina. And uh, a couple days ago, the doctor told me I could start looking up again and looking at a computer. So I decided, why not make a video? So far, everything is okay. I had a gas bubble put in my eye and I had to stare at the ground for a week, a whole week. Um, thank you. God for audiobooks because I probably would have went insane, but the gas bubble is still in there. Um, it's about half gone now. I uh, can't do any straining or lifting or anything like that for I don't know how much longer. Hopefully not too much longer because I really got a lot to do. But overall, it's been a an okay experience. Very terrifying um, to go blind in an, in an eye, especially me because I've had a phobia of going blind since I was a kid. It would always come into my mind and I would start freaking out and I was worried I was going to get hit in the, the eye with a ball or something and go blind. So, um, yeah, for me, it's, it, the, the fear, I guess, is, is the worst thing about all this. But I got some things I've sold on eBay. Currently, my eBay store is closed um, because of my injury. I haven't been selling anything. Uh, it's not closed. It's just on vacation and nobody can buy anything. Um, I assume as soon as I go off of vacation mode, everything just, you know, shows back up. But yeah, let me show you some things I've sold in the past three months, actually. First thing we got here are these Picolinos, I believe is how you pronounce it, Picolinos. I don't know. It's a shoe brand I had never heard of. I haven't seen any since I picked these up. Picked these up at Goodwill for $6. Um, they're practically new without tags. And uh, I sold them for $59.99. I don't know why it says free shipping. I, I did ship them free shipping. Uh, it's just that I never do free shipping on shoes. I don't know if that's an eBay thing or I just made the mistake. It's, it's hard to say, but just sometimes you see that free shipping and you're like, I'm pretty sure that I did not do free shipping on that. But I had originally priced these at $99.99 because, you know, I thought they were going to sell for that. The months went by and I just kept lowering the price by like $10. And here we are. We sold them at $59.99 free shipping. So we still made great profit on them. They're really nice driving loafer shoes. And they fit me, and I'm like, should I keep these? Am I ever going to want to put these on and do some driving? Um, probably not, so I flipped them. Here is a Sears Craftsman uh, Remote Control Conversion Kit. Picked this up at a yard sale last year for $12. I ended up listing it in February when uh, everything was on lockdown. I got a lot of listings done. So it didn't sit for too long. It took like two or three months to sell. Sold this for $49.99. It shipped first class. It was very light. Uh, I remember trying to get the guy to sell it to me cheaper and he wouldn't. Uh, but yeah, I still knew I could probably make money on this Craftsman door opener. Always keep an eye open for these vintage uh, garage door openers, especially Genie. I've sold some sealed Genie openers for around $200 before. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. Here is a John Deere hat I picked up at a thrift store for 25 cents. Uh, it's not a high-end John Deere hat by any means, but for a quarter, you know, selling it for $17.99, free shipping. And I couldn't tell, you know, I'm no expert when it comes to vintage John Deere hats. I actually picked up one recently, if you if you saw the video. Um, it's a much better hat. It's like a $40 or $50 hat. But anyway, this one is just kind of like, it says Arizona Machinery Company, so maybe that is what hurt it. It's also like a blood stain or something that was in it. It was kind of gross. Uh, but I did try an auction on this. I started at like 30 bucks for an auction. I think I ran the auction twice and didn't get any bids. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to price it to move it. And it sold for $17.99. You know, in the end, I'm, I'm probably making like 8 or $9 on it. But yeah, it's still worth it to pick up for 25 cents, right? Here's another smaller item uh, I picked up at a Goodwill. Uh, this was two bucks, I believe, maybe a dollar. I don't remember exactly. Because of my eye, I haven't went deep into my records to try to figure out all the prices. I apologize for that. I just didn't want to spend too much effort and strain my eye or anything. Uh, but yeah, this sold for $14.99 free shipping. It's just some photo paper. So why not pick that up and flip it? Uh, again, it's just smaller profits. Uh, but the return on your investment by spending a dollar or two dollars is, is really high. This was in one of my videos fairly recently. This is this was a huge uh, workforce, a large format type printer. Uh, the box was opened and destroyed. It had like a LPN return label on it. It's at Goodwill for $20. And I didn't want to really mess with it because it was so big. 
But when I looked up the comps, what they were selling for, I just kind of was like, man, I got to I gotta check this out. What did I sell this thing for? I sold it for $249.99 plus shipping. So uh, it looks like somebody spent like 30 some dollars to have it shipped. Uh, I believe, well, I definitely shipped it FedEx. And this sold really quick, so maybe I could have priced it up a little bit more. They were selling in the $300 range for like new sealed, but since this was open, everything was still taped, plastic on it and, and all that. So oh, I was willing to sell it new open box. It's been well over a month. I don't think they're going to return it or they had any problems. Uh, so don't be scared to sell these large items. This was close to 50 pounds, if I, if I remember right. But a great flip nonetheless. Here's a bread man, a bread maker. I picked this up at a yard sale this year. Uh, earlier in the year for $5, I listed it, and it sold fairly quick for $49.99 plus shipping. Usually when I sell these heavier items, I do a option for priority mail and FedEx. Usually it ships FedEx because it's just cheaper for people. Will someone in California buy this from me since I'm in Ohio and pay the calculated shipping of probably $30 or $40? Probably not. When you're doing calculated shipping, usually you limit your buyers to people who are around you. And I'm fine with that because, you know, I'm not going to do free shipping on something like this. <laughs> because, like I said, it could be up to $40 to ship something like this to California. So if you're new to selling on eBay, heavier items, anything, especially over like even two pounds, it starts getting really expensive to ship across country. So I would suggest doing just calculated shipping on that. Here is a Panasonic portable CD player. We all know to pick these up and flip them right. Sony's better, but these other brands sell well. Uh, I picked this up, I believe it was at a garage sale for 50 cents. I believe this is the one I picked up at a yard sale for 50 cents or a dollar. I definitely didn't pay more than $2 for it, but I sold it for $17.99 and they ship first class, uh, super light. I got these eBay boxes that are, I forget the dimensions, but you can ship first class with those and it protects them. You can put these in a bubble mailer too, wrap them, you know, in a few layers of bubble wrap. They usually ship pretty well, but they can get crushed. So I, I prefer to use a box if I can still keep it into the, the first class um, category. Here is something to look out for. Uh, there's the picture of it, of the actual Squeezo tomato squeezer, juicer. I don't know what you call it exactly. It's called Squeezo. I believe Squeezo 2. I saw this at a Goodwill in the, the box with all the utensils and utilities and everything. And it was five bucks. I'm like, this is, I'll look this up. Let's see what it's you know selling for. I was pretty shocked what it was selling for. I believe I sold mine for, uh, yeah, $159.95 plus shipping. And when I listed it, you know, it took a couple days, but a woman sent me a message and asked me if I would go any lower on it. And I usually, I don't have best offer turned on. So when people send me those messages, I usually just ignore it unless it is something I'm like, eh, I'm willing to get rid of this. This was newly listed. So I just ignored it. She ended up buying it at the end of the day anyway. So, uh, very desirable. And a lot of people are selling these for lower than what they're worth. People who are doing auctions, you know, they're selling for around $60 with bids, but I just did a, a buy it now because there were some parts in there that were new and unused. I believe this was completely unused as well. But wow, what a great flip for something so weird. So if you're out at a yard sale or a thrift store and you see something like this, it says Squeezo on it, uh, you know to pick it up. I'll be honest, I don't even know what this is exactly. MR600. Did I already show this in a video? I feel like I have. Uh, but I believe it's for like a guitar or something, musical something. Uh, it was $3 at Goodwill. I just looked up the model number, sold it, sold it for $23.95. It shipped first class. So I did free shipping and, uh, we made some money on that. Here are some WWF vintage type, uh, wrestling figures. Uh, these came in a lot. I bought a lot from somebody. I just had a bunch of stuff in it and this was something that was in it. And I uh, ended up selling these for $29.95, and I, I charge shipping on that. But wrestling figures are pretty good figures to look out for in the used and new market. Uh, you can see the box is kind of tore up on this one. Wrestling figures seem to sell pretty well, especially the vintage ones, or any vintage wrestling toys are worth uh, a second look. These are at Goodwill. They were $2 a piece. I bought them all and I lotted them up like this. I sold them for $39.95, free shipping. I don't remember if they shipped first class. 
they probably ended up going in like a padded envelope for, and I shipped them for seven fifty two. I would imagine they're probably just slightly over a pound. However, you know, it's a great flip. Look out for these kind of things. Um, cosmetics, soaps, refill kits, things that people have to replenish replenishables, I, I should say things, especially if they're discontinued, you know, if these were discontinued and people were wanting to buy them, uh, they might pay up to a hundred dollars. And I'm not even joking. You know, I've sold soap for around a hundred dollars before and other things that are discontinued. So when you're looking at stuff, you always got to have an open mind, even if it looks like it's not worth it. Here are some Cabela's Gore-Tex boots. These are women's boots. I picked these up very recently, I picked up two pair, a pair of Red Wing Gore-Tex and Cabela's Gore-Tex, both women, same size, obviously, you know, the same person's boots. I listed the Red Wings a bit higher. I can't even remember if they've sold, uh, but these, I think I messed up. $24.95, I'm looking here, and I'm like, why did I price these so low? Like, I think I meant to price them at $34.95, and I probably just put them at $24.95, <laughs> at least I didn't put them at like $4.95 or something. Uh, that would be an embarrassing blunder. But there's really no reason they're in pretty good condition. No reason that I should have sold these for $24.95, uh, charged shipping on them. But, you know, I paid $5 for them, so I still made money. They didn't really take much cleanup. They had some dust and light dirt on them. I just wiped them down. I've been really enjoying selling shoes um, over the past few months. I just keep finding some really good deals on shoes. They can be long tails sometimes because you got to wait for someone to come by that wants that shoe and th is that size. But usually your cost of entry is low. They're fairly easy to store as well. And I've said it so many times, if you see that Gore-Tex on any clothing, any shoe, any hat, uh, it's probably going to be worth picking up if you can get it at a, a good price. And then we got this new Colm Solid State record player thing. Uh, this was $10 at a Goodwill. And it was not in the greatest shape. Needle was gone, I believe, or destroyed. The only way I could test it was plug it in and it lit up. It's even missing a knob there, you can see. And I noticed that some models, not this same model, but other models were selling for in the hundreds. And I'm like, for $10, I can just buy this and we'll see what happens. I'll just test it the best I can. And it ended up selling pretty quick. I think within a week for $79.95 plus shipping. So yeah, that was a great little flip. I just plugged it in and the turntable turned, uh, the light lit up and that's just, uh, that's, that's the extent of my testing. I said, described the condition, took good pictures and somebody was willing to buy this, probably some collector or refurbisher. They'll probably fix it up and flip it for a lot more. And you know, it's a great cycle. I'm, ha I'm happy uh, to sell it for $80 and make my money and help someone else make some money. That's going to do it for the video, everybody. I really want to thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that like button for me. There's going to be some more videos like this coming up since I really can't do any work right now, except maybe make some videos. Uh, so I'll try to get some more of these sales videos out. I might even have a haul video from right before my, um, eye problem. Uh, maybe I can edit and put together. I really want to thank everyone also for the, the kind well wishes that people left on my channel, uh, wishing me uh, good luck with the surgery and a lot of advice that was given to me from people who's went through the surgery. I really do appreciate that. I read them all and um, some very kind words. If you could do me a favor and hit that like button, share the video, subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know some of your best finds um, in the last week, best flips. I would love to hear it. I don't have much else to do but read some comments and, you know, watch stuff on YouTube or whatever until I can start working again and get my eBay store back up and running. Luckily, Amazon FBA is, has been, you know, bringing in some income because I have a lot of stuff there and they do all the shipping. But the YouTube algorithm, you know, is going to look at my channel and be like, you haven't posted a video in three weeks. We're not going to recommend this video to anybody. So, uh, yeah, do me a favor, hit that like button. But you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at flipping underscore junk. Uh, this has been Wick. Until next time.